So hi, I'm Dr. Cynthia Clark. I am an acupuncturist and a functional medicine nutritionist, and I'm taking Tony Robbins' business mastery course right now, and it's amazing. And we have this opportunity to come up with this project. The crazy thing about this is that the variables are so undefined. And I, I wanted to take a moment um, and think about well, this thing that happened in Unleash the Power Within for me, which was that we were led through this amazing pre this amazing meditation that was, okay, it's at the end of your life and you're looking back on everything you've accomplished in life and what do you care the most about? And um, this is my friend, Scott Ganello. I'll tell you more about him in just a moment. But I had a really bizarre thing happen to me at that moment because it was something that I had like no experience with. So I'm sitting here, I'm in this beautiful meditation and I get this image of um, being in the ocean and swimming with this ginormous whale, like overwhelmingly huge. I am just a, a tiny little, tiny little thing. And then as we say in this meditation, because Tony really likes to juice it, right? So it's like, gets bigger and bigger. And then I realize that I'm swimming with like this whole school of whales. And I feel so uh, just... In, in a state of awe and, it, and it's absolutely amazing. Um, it was especially special to me because years ago when I was doing a meditation I was uh, just on a plane traveling. So like nothing anywhere, it was way before I was an acupuncturist doing this energy work. I was doing this meditation where I wanted to see like the universe, right? Like the face of the universe. And the thing that came to me was that there was this giant eye looking at me and I said, okay, maybe zoom out a little bit. And the eye belonged to this whale. So I don't, I'm a brand new scuba diver and um, we have this opportunity in, in business mastery to, you know, kind of do this backwards approach. Like what about, what if it's the end of your life and you can look at um, what have you done to help make the world a better place? And since I had this really strong ocean connection and my good friend Scott is helping to save the oceans, I thought it would be a really amazing opportunity to introduce him to you and his organization, Lionfish Community, Lionfish Central, and um, and have him tell you about it. I will say, Scott, up until a couple of years ago, I had no idea that any of this was going on. Um, I think it's wildly cool that you have dedicated your mission to completely focusing on this problem. So tell us what the problem is and why it's a problem. The problem are lionfish, these beautiful creatures that just are so majestic that don't belong here. Um, they're invasive and they are uh, eating up all the fish and crustaceans um, because they're opportunists. They just eat anything and everything they can they put in their mouth and uh, they're destroying reefs. So, you know, the, li the, the, the lionfish eat the small fish that maintain the coral reefs. So when you lose those fish, you lose the coral reefs. When you lose the coral reefs, you lose the environment, the uh, good weather, the, you know, everything, it, everything's connected. So how does that work? Like I've, I've heard this, um, like, can I, can I kind of play devil's advocate for a moment sure. and ask you some of the basic questions? Like, sure. I mean, nature kind of takes care of itself, right? Like it, it, right. it does the right thing. So, uh, so, so what if there's one species of fish that's eating a bunch of other species of fish? Like yeah. that can't be wrong because nature is doing it, right? Yes. Um, so it's the difference between clean water and dirty water, number one because those little fish help maintain the coral reefs. When the coral reefs die, they don't filter the water. The water gets polluted. Uh, um, your, your environment changes, right? Weather so our changes. our whole filtration system for like planet Earth is being affected. Number one. Number two is all the fish that they eat are at the bottom or the top or somewhere within the food chain. So when you remove links of the food chain, things start to collapse. So when you're eating all these smaller fish uh, that they can eat, and they can eat fish up to six inches. Um, the fish above them in the food chain can't feed on them because they're not there, which means they leave to look for other places to go hunt, which means the fish that feed on those bigger fish, those aren't getting any food, which means the sharks are coming by and there's no fish in that reef and they're not getting any food. So does it correlate with the number of shark attacks recently on divers? Maybe, maybe not, who knows. But what happens is when you bottom out a food chain, everything collapses. So lionfish, they breed within the first year. 
and anywhere between 30 to 50,000 eggs every two to four days. The numbers wow. are- say, Could you say that number again? Yeah. Every two to four days, a mature lionfish, which matures in one year, within one year, is pumping out anywhere between 30 and 50,000 eggs. Oh my God. <laughs> every two to four days. Whereas the fish that they're eating take between three and five years to start to reproduce. So the little the juvenile fish that they're eating and the smaller fish that they're eating aren't even get, being able to reproduce, which means eventually after so many generations, it's going to bottom out. So the lionfish are eating up all the babies of the other fish. Octopus, shrimp, crabs, lobster, fish, cleaner fish, everything. The fish that clean the other fish, the little uh, cleaners, they're eating those. The, the, the grazers that maintain the algae from growing over the corals, they're eating them. They're eating everything. And you know, how everyone's like, well, how did they get here? At this point, it doesn't really matter because they're here from Massachusetts all the way down to Brazil. And the Mediterranean, when they opened up the Suez Canal to connect the Red Sea with the Mediterranean, all those lionfish went into the Mediterranean. So the Eastern Mediterranean, Turkey, Lebanon, Cyprus, Greece, even Italy is having problems with the lionfish and they're just eating everything. How long has everything. this been going on? They started noticing lionfish uh, off of Miami in the, the 80s. Probably they were there long before that. But they think, you know, they, they started coming here in the 80s. And because they grow and they breed so fast, they reproduce so fast. Um, you know, you can see the chart. There's a, like a picture every year. It shows the red spots where they're coming. And uh, it just exploded. And it just keeps exploding. Okay. And, and I know there's a challenge. Lionfish can go to depths they've been spotted at a thousand feet deep divers oh can't my, get to them oh my gosh yeah so and and how do you how do you kill them like how do you get rid of them one by you one you set off a bomb you know like a like a roach bomb or something but not destroy nope. the ocean no nope. one by one you have oh, to spear yeah. them one by one this sounds like a no-win equation it's uh well you know here's my theory my theory is that um, if divers go anywhere up to 100 feet diving to 100 feet deep and hunt lionfish and keep their reefs clean, it'll give Mother Nature time to figure out what to do with them. In, a, in evolution, it takes about 100 years for a tiny, tiny, tiny little piece of evolution to occur. 100 years. We don't have 100 years. So if you can go and maintain your reefs down to 100 feet, 120, depending on how your diving skills are, 150, some go to 170. If you can catch the lionfish and keep them at bay, the shallower reefs where all the fish reproduce will have a shot of coming back. And I've seen that happen in Belize, a little island off the coast, about 25 miles off the coast, um, Tom Owens Key. They, every day they hunt the reefs uh, five days a week. And they saw the populations of the reef fish come back they saw the decline of lionfish. They still catch a lot throughout the week, uh, but they caught over 100,000 lionfish in the last maybe 12 years. And oh my gosh. So if you stop, let's say during COVID, what's three months of not going into the ocean times every two to four days, right? Divide that by two to four days where they're pumping out 30 to 50,000 eggs. Um, it's just coming back. It's like taking a five gallon bucket and trying to take all the water out of Niagara Falls as it's coming down bucket wow. by bucket so but it's but you've seen success you've seen the fruits of the labors of all the people that are working on this yes yes so uh in the florida That's keys really for exciting. Instance, yeah the florida keys used to be inundated and now a lot of my dive friends down there uh who use it and sell the fish for food uh are having a hard time finding them they're still there by a big number but not as prolific as they were before so it just takes all of us one by one and that's why i when I learned about it, I learned about it just a few years ago. I mean, not not that long ago. And it hit me so hard. I dropped everything and devoted uh, the rest of my life and the rest of my work towards finding solutions. Uh, so basically, we help everyone around the world, the Mediterranean, the Caribbean, the Gulf, the Atlantic. We help them get out there and get more lionfish tournaments, uh, app to track the lionfish, video games to inspire kids to learn how to catch them, comic books to show the kids how bad they are see who a true hero is and and hopefully they'll grow up to help join the fight because it's not going away. So your mission, it sounds like while well, you're working on cleaning up the oceans, which uh, in my mind, it sounds a lot like weeding. 
<laughs> just got to get out there and dig them out one by one. That's um, a that's a really great uh, metaphor. Yeah, because, yeah, you turn your back on the weeds for a week and they're they're back again, especially in Florida. But it sounds like your mission is also to uh, provide a really positive real world example of what people can do, especially young people can do to help make their world a better place and, and take pride in their efforts and see the fruits of their labor. Right. And it's not that hard. I mean, you don't have to eat fish. You don't have to even go in the ocean. Um, like you, for instance, you you donated to our nonprofit, right? We're trying to bring the whole lionfish community together on a global scale. I got scale. my awesome shirt for it. And you texted me a picture of you out in a gym working out in public. So as simple as wearing that brings education out there. So it, it helps people look at that and go, oh, I wonder what that is. Let me look at the website. So it's not hard to do something to make a difference. Um, and what I'm trying to do with this nonprofit is bring the whole lionfish community kind of all together so that there's quicker responses, quicker answers. You can get to see people in this tiny little village somewhere in this tiny little island and see exactly how many lionfish he's caught and reach out to him and say, I'm coming to help you. What do I need? So we're just trying to bring everyone together on a global and, scale. And one of the things I was so impressed by in your comic book is that you have all of these Superheroes, you have all of these people from all around the world that are doing this now that are, you know, like they're, um, yeah. I'm trying not to say badass, but they're super badass. Like they're, they're heroes. Out there doing them. They're real superheroes, right? And, and what we're trying to do is change the focus for kids from all these like spider guys and these rusty iron guys, you know, uh, trying to show them that they can see that person on the streets and go, wow, that's actually the, that's a real hero. And you can QR code, snap it, and go look and read more about them and reach out and, to them and see their social media from them. And I see each one of them has their own QR code. Yeah, yeah. And you That's can learn so about cool. them. And yeah. So what we're trying to do is and is is focus on the individuals out there doing great things so other people can say, wow, if they can do that, I can do that. Like yeah. some people don't even scuba dive. They, they don't have the money to scuba dive. So they just put on a snorkel and fins and go and hunt lionfish. Oh, wow. And, and you can do that. And that's the sad part because that means they're in shallow water, 30, 40 feet deep, 20 feet deep. And that's bad because that's where all the breeder fish are are doing their, their uh, re repopulating the reefs. With the and I remember, it, I think it was maybe about a, a year ago or not even as much when uh, you told me that um, there was a submarine being donated to your cause um yeah. which is actually i've since learned that the term is submersible that it's a submersible it's a yeah. two-person submersible um and and you got like a celebrity spokesperson with this too you found somebody else you found a kindred spirit who was just as dedicated to cleaning up the oceans as you um and we'll hear more from him later um but can you tell us a little bit about who that person is Sure. His name is Scott Cassell, and he's uh, he used to be a submarine pilot, a test pilot for submarines, gone down to thousands of feet. All over the world, he's been uh, piloting subs. And uh, he finally decided instead of piloting everyone else's sub, he's piloted his own sub. So he bought a sub. And uh, he's done National Geographic, Discovery, all these, the BBC, all these great documentaries using the submersibles. And by the way, the difference between submersible and submarine is a sub submarine has a bathroom, a submersible doesn't. It's basically a submarine without a bathroom, right? So he called me up one day and said, hey, um, I want to help with the lionfish. Uh, he found us online, likes what we do, and he wants to donate his sub and his time and experience to help us find solutions. And it's really important because divers don't get down to 300 feet that often. A very minute select few do, but only for a matter of minutes, and they're not hunting lionfish because they have to, it's a hard process to get back up through decompression and all that. So he's given us the opportunity to go deeper than divers can do, can go for hours. I mean, it can go down for 8 to 10 hours, right? A diver can go down for maybe 8 minutes. So we can now explore the ocean's depths at a much longer, more efficient rate and film not only for lionfish, but also see what's out there, what kind of fish populations are out there. Is there pollution? Are there ghost nets? Are there, you know, how's the environment at 300 feet? Uh, and yeah, he's just basically donated everything to help us. So we partnered with him and um, we're going to be exploring and we're actually working on a spearing system, some really badass thing uh, with some laser sights. And when the buttons, the dots hit, the lionfish will hit the button, it'll spear it, pull it back out, we'll pull it off, contain it and then bring them all to the surface. 
So the goal there is to get where the larger breeder ones are hiding out during the day and breeding every two to four days. My theory right. is that they're a bunch of females. What I love about this is that we can now see the world that we're trying to save. Right. And it, you know, I've talked to my science friends, right? My PhD and doctorates and and all these science community friends that they're like, well, for us to do a project like that, it would cost millions of dollars. We'd have to have a committee. We'd have to do paperwork and grants and this and that. It would take over a process of a couple of years to do a few dives. With the private sector, you become a citizen scientist. We can now give them the information that they don't have. Tell me and about that citizen scientist. What does citizen scientist mean? That That sounds fascinating. Well, there's scientists that have a degree that work for, you know, science companies, right? So like um, NOAA, um, let's say, or these different organizations that that do scientific work, right? And they've got uh, the studies. fancy labs and they've got all the financial backing and here right, we go. They have the finance, that's the key is the financial backing, right? And that's the hard part is um, the, the general public can't really do stuff like this, except for Scott. And it's really not that hard. And what Scott and I are trying to do is show the general public it's not that bad. It's not that hard to do. And so we want to become citizen scientists where we're actually going out and studying, getting film, producing data, like through our app, our Lionfish Patrol community app, and that the scientists can then use because we have it, they don't. And we have it on a global scale. We have run 30 different countries with that data. And we want to add that data from the deep search that we do with the submarine or submersible. Um, and add that to the mix so that they can actually see the video of what's down there, see the depth, see the, you know, the pressure, the GPS, we can get water quality. We can provide them with stuff that they can't readily get a lot quicker and faster. So citizens are doing scientific work on their own without a degree, but they're still giving valuable data to the community. And then you're you're opening the doors even further, aren't you? I've heard about your your school that you're launching to teach people how to pilot this up so that they can really participate and they can really own their citizen uh, scientists and and like get out there and, and see this world for themselves. Like I see this footage. I, I'm a brand new scuba diver and I see this footage of places people have gone. And I'm like, wow, that's so amazing. I I don't know if I can. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'm a good enough scuba diver to do that. There's like a lot of scary yeah. stuff in those waters but like being able to see through the lens of a submersible is like really changes the game and these young people and um i mean it, the class is open to anybody right correct yeah, yeah. well we and don't so, want like fourth graders in there but right. yeah i mean <laughs> you know, anybody got, 18 and older right we've got a, a, a college student that just graduates ready to go to uh, graduate school to do shark research she wants to learn how to be in a submersible in case that ever opportunity comes for when her training and she'll have that on her resume as she goes as well um you know we've got people that run museums we've got uh, uh divers that uh go out and rescue things at deep waters some dangerous stuff some tech divers um so we have a great little group on our first uh, first attempt here yeah we want to show the people that it's not as scary as it looks uh, it's actually a lot and easier than And there's a safe way to do it, that you can do these do amazing it. things, like stuff that we're seeing in Avatar right now, like right. this beauty of the underwater world. But Only but not as prolific. What? Not as prolific as Avatar, not as beautiful as Avatar, because the ocean has been you know, ripped apart, basically. Mm. So mm. our goal is to work with coral restoration companies. Here's the thing. People say, oh, marine conservation. That's a big umbrella. It sounds so it's noble and it's great. That's like thousands and thousands of things, millions of things. We focus on the lionfish specifically because that's the biggest piece of the puzzle. You can't do marine conservation without removing the lionfish. You can't have coral restoration successful if you don't remove the lionfish because they're just going to eat all the fish that those corals are attracting and then the corals are going to be you know, less healthy. So they're like the linchpin. Okay, right. so I, we're I very wish I specific. could stay and talk to you about this, but my team is getting ready to meet and I want to go share this with them. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for the great work that you're doing. Thanks thank for you. making it fun and cool and interesting and exciting. <laughs> and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Sounds good. I look forward to uh, helping you guys out as much as I can. So thank you. Thank you.